Father in heaven, we praise you, God, for who you are. Praise you, Lord, for you are love. We praise you, Lord, for you are holy. Praise you, Lord, for you are righteous. Praise you, God, for you are good. Lord, we thank you for this, uh, for this another opportunity for us to, to gather online, to learn from you. We ask for your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, to work in our minds, in our hearts. We ask for your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, to, to change us. As we learn from you tonight, to change us and give us even the strength and the boldness, Lord God, and the capability to apply what we will be learning tonight, Lord God, in our day-to-day -day lives. Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to give us the wisdom, uh, the intellect to absorb everything that you want us to, to receive tonight, Lord God. We ask for your Holy Spirit to, to lead us, to take charge, and to take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, ito po yung ating... Uh, Lesson for tonight, the parable of the net. No, it talks about the harvest and the separation of the righteous and the evil. So, mahikita po natin ng ating parable sa Matthew 13, verses 47 to 52. Mahikita po natin sa Matthew 13, puno po yan ng parable. There are, I think, seven or eight parables. I have seven, I think, seven. Ito yung last na parable dun. And most of the parables there ay natapos na natin. Yung parable of the sower, parable of the uh, weeds, parable of the hidden treasure, parable of the pearl of great price, of great value. Or, and uh, ngayon ang pag-uusapan natin, ito the parable of the net. Ito po yung parable, let me read the parable for you. Matthew 13 verse 47 to 52, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the, the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is sold. So, ano po yung purposes ng parable? Una, Jesus tells the parable so that his disciples, including us, because we are disciples of Christ, uh, understand what the kingdom of heaven is like. So, tignan mo natin yung Matthew 13, yun ang purposes ng parable, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven is like. What else? So that they may understand that no one escapes the judgment of God. At this time, ang kausap ni Jesus, mga, dis mga disciples na lang niya, yung mga apostles na lang niya. Uh, he left the crowd already. So, they may understand that no one escapes the judgment of God, and there will be a separation, a final, ultimate separation between the righteous and the evil. So that they may understand that hell is real. So that they may act as they should to be fishers of man. Bakit reiterate ni Jesus itong pabalik-balik na taki ng heaven na ganito, that there will be judgment to let them weeds, and there will be a separation between good and evil. Because, uh, as we know, ang mga, uh, mga, some members of the, the religious leaders, yung mga Sadducees, I think they don't believe in resurrection. Or I'm not, uh, Sadducees, right? Mayan? Sadducees, no? Yung mga hindi na niniwala sa resurrection. And they thought na yun lang yun ng one sa matay ng tao, wala na. But Jesus reiterated na there's a judgment and there will be eternity, either eternity in hell or eternity in heaven. And Jesus also, ang purpose niya, that to remind the disciples na hell is horrible and hell is not cute. Now, may isang interview nga nakita si, na mention ni John MacArthur sa preaching niya about this na isang rockstar na babae, na bata, teenager. At uh, tinanong siya nga, uh, he's a 
she's punk daw, punk rock yung music niya. Tinanong siya, ano daw yung future niya? Or ano yung, what was she looking forward to? At ang sabi ng bata is, uh, death daw kasi she wanted to go to hell as soon as possible because it's fun in hell. So, yun ang mga, and we have so many, ngayon mga kaibigan natin or na family members even na uh, they don't actually have the right idea or the right description or concept of hell. Yung iba na dethrone si Satanas, ang iba is they thought that uh, they believed na ang uh, hell is uh, wild partying and all, pero dito ay explain natin kung ano din yung hell, ano yung final separation. Okay, let's proceed. So, again, talks about the kingdom of heaven. Balikan po natin dito. Mahira na Matthew 30, sa, sa, sa first verse, 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is light. So, as we talk sa mga uh, previous natin mga lesson, ano yung kingdom of heaven? Tato yung uh, dimension natin yung ano yung kingdom of heaven. When we say kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God, it pertains to the kingdom of God that is the rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the universe. At ito yung pinagpag-usapan natin ngayon. So, makikita natin yan sa mga verses below. At ang pangalawa, when we say kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, it is the kingdom of God. Uh, kingdom of God is a spiritual rule over the hearts and lives of those who willingly submit to God's authority. Like us, born again believers, the, the rule of God is in our hearts. Mayroong kingdom, kaya member tayo sa kingdom ng Panginoon kasi... He's reigning, he's ruling in our hearts as our Lord, as our King. And the kingdom of God is used in scripture also as the literal rule of Christ on earth, on the earth during the millennium. That would be uh, after the uh, seven years of tribulation and after Naikas sa Satan sa bottomless pit and there will be 1,000 years that Jesus will reign. However, ang pag-uusapan natin na kingdom of God dito is this. The kingdom of God that is the rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the universe. Na ito yung pag-uusapan natin na ito yung the kingdom of God na tinutukoy ni Jesus sa parable na to. So, so let's begin. So Matthew 13, 47 says, Again, the kingdom of God is like a net. So, familiar ko tayo sa net. Ako, familiar na familiar ako sa net. Ang dami kong sizes ng net sa bahay. Maliliit, malalaki kasi. Ang dami kong magigot, mahilig ko sa fish. But it, ang tinutukoy ng net dito, iba, napakalaking net. Sa, ba, sa time ni Jesus, ang mga tao, they were into fishing and agriculture. Kaya, they are so familiar itong ginamit ni Jesus na parable because it's so familiar sa mga tao because nakikita nila in everyday lives nila, nakikita nila ito nangyayari. No, so it's like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. So, sa Bible, makikita natin tatlong klaseng nets na, 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 na mention dyan. Uh, yung una, or tatlong klaseng fishing. No? Yung una, makikita natin, yung, naalala nyo si Peter, when Jesus was asked about tax. Tapos si Peter, sabi niya, pumunta ka dun, uh, mamingwit ka ng isda at sa, may, makikita kang coin. Sa isda at yan, ibayad mo gamit yung tax. So, one way of fishing is itong hook and uh, line. So, yung hook and line. Pangalawa is this. Uh, mali maliit na net. Uh, bilog siya. It's a circle. Tapos may weight sa, sa around the circumference. Uh, sa circumference ng circle, may, may weight siya. Tapos net. Tapos yan yun ay kaya ng isang tao. And they just throw it kung saan nakikita nilang maraming isda, doon nila itatapon. And then, they pull it back and makukuha na yung isda. That's, that's another way of fishing. However, ang tinutukoy na net dito is this one. Kung nakikita nyo, napakalaki. Mga tao to. Nakikita nyo yung cursor, yung mouse ko, no? Oh, ito mga tao. One side and mga tao din on the other side. Ito yung boat nila. Maliit. And this is the whole net. I'm so familiar with this kasi every time na umuwi ko before sa late eh, yan everyday may nagganyan. So tumutulong kami na nag, uh, what you call this? Pull the net na nasa, nasa land kami na, na sign. <clears throat> okay. So ang, ang, ang Greek word dito is sagene or mahila natin na 
if you check sa internet, ito po yun, pahanapin mo yung same, same fishing, or same may pagbasa nito, yan ang lalabas. So, napakalaki nito, it's stretch, ang, 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 ang stretch niya is parang one mile. So, how do they do that? Ang one end, iiwan nila sa ano? Iiwan nila sa land. Tapos yung boat, dala yung another end. Tapos ikutan nila around one mile and then balik na yung boat sa shore at hihilain na yung dalawang ends. At eventually, ang dami niyang mahukuhang isda. At iba, ibang klaseng isda. So now verse 47, ito yung tinutukoy ni Jesus na net. Hindi yung maliit na net, hindi yung hook and line. So again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. So iba-ibang klase na uh, lahat ng klase, every kind of fish. No? Hindi lang some kind, but every kind ang nagagather ng net nito. Now, analogy yan sa judgment to come na sinasabi ni Jesus Christ na in one day ang earth ang buong mundo there will be a net ito yung tinutukoy na nothing escapes that net no one escapes this net and no one escapes judgment so in the end ultimately every single one of us will be judged at yan ang sinisimbolize ng net yung judgment ng Panginoon yung reaping now and it is going on right now. No? Kasi as tayo, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, ang reaping is going on. Like us, born-again Christians, we uh, are commissioned to share the gospel. No? And we share the gospel to people, they accept it or not. And then at some uh, one day, pag namatay sila, then the reaping comes. Hindi na kailangan bumalik pa si Jesus Christ or when namatay yung tao ang sinira mo ng gospel whether inaccept niya or hindi is the, reap, the reaping comes and then judgment will automatic the next breath niya from last breath niya sa earth the next breath niya he'll be facing Jesus and he'll be judged no? so and the reaping is going on right now and eventually uh, lahat ng tao if you say even 1,000 years from now there will only be two places left and that will be heaven and hell. At walang taong either wala sa heaven ang walang taong uh, na wala sa heaven or in hell. So there's no other place. It's only heaven or hell. And all of us since the time of Adam until kung kailan man yun mangyari no one escapes that judgment or no one escapes that net. Lahat ay pasok. So so verse 48, let's proceed. So ilang verses lang to, madali tayo matapos, and there will be questions later on. Mas, mas okay if you have questions so we can answer them. So verse 48, when it was full, so what they did, uh, yun ang net na tinutukoy. So pagpuno na, when it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and they sorted or they separated and sorted the good entertainers but threw away the bad. So yun ang nangyayari doon. And ito din ang mangyayari later on. So, there's a net. There will be a judgment to come. And ang sorting ng righteous. And even makikita natin yan sa Matthew 25. The sorting of uh, the goat and the sheep. No? So, sa so verse 49, ito yung sinabi. So, therefore, it will be uh, the same way. In the same way, it will be at the end of the age. So at the end of the age, in which tayo ay nasa, na, we are already in the last days. No? But the end of the last days, ito na yung judgment, there will be a sorting, there will be a separation between the good and the evil. At walang exempted dito. Hindi pwedeng sabihin, no, I don't believe in Jesus, I don't believe in Christianity, uh, wala akong, I don't have anything to do with that, I don't have anything to do with your faith, so, exempted ako dyan, no. Whether ano pa yung faith ng tao, or maybe uh, even atheist pa yung tao, it will not change the fact na sinabi sa Biblia that no one escapes judgment. Because ang judgment na to is not subjective sa 
kung ano yung belief ng tao. There will be a judgment to come, sabi sa Bible, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. No. Every, hindi some. So at, the, so at the end of the age, there will be a separation, there will be a judgment to come at walang exempted. The angels will come out, alam po natin do, and sa lahat ng mga, and the previous uh, parables that we talk about, especially the, uh, the weeds, the parable of the weeds, di ba ang angels ninyo harvester? And explain ni Jesus na yung mga harvest are the angels. It's not us, it's the angels. Sila yung mga reapers and sila yung mga harvesters. They will do the separating or the sorting out. So the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous. To, to separate the evil from the righteous. Sa parable of the weeds or the weeds among the wheat, ito po yung verse, Matthew 13, 24, 30. Nakita natin doon that uh, meron din ang, ang good and evil. Di ba? Una, they grow together. No? Na yung wheat. Tapos may nag-grow na tares or itong weeds. Tapos sabi ng mga mga servants na can we pull them out sabi ng, ng, ng master na no uh, let them grow at pag namunga dun mo makita kung alin yung wheat at alin yung wheat so in the same way ganun din ngayon sa earth na good and evil we just interact and that is why we need to share the gospel to them good and evil interact parang wala lang at my common grace ang sunlight ay sa we receive the blessing of God ng sunlight, sila din. Yung rain, sila din. Yung air, uh, we are uh, enjoying the blessing ng Panginoon ng oxygen, sila din. But pa pareho lang, yun lang sinasabi ng parable of the weeds. Let them grow together. But there will be a reaping at the end of the age. There will be a harvesting. So, ganun din na sinasabi dito na there will be a separation that will come the good and the evil and there will be a harvest at the end of the age and the angels are the reapers sila yung mga harvesters and the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the father and the wicked will be thrown into the fiery furnace pabalik balik lang sa parable of the weeds again ito thrown into the fiery furnace may kita din natin sa succeeding verses ganun din ang sinabi ng parable na to. so Jesus basically preached about hell uh, pag bilangin mo, bilangin natin yung preaching ni Jesus, he taught about hell more than love. More than he taught about love. Ganon niya in-emphasize yung hell. Because alam po natin, nabasa natin sa Biblia, God desires everyone to be saved. Desires. No, would like everyone to be saved. But alam po natin na in the end, many will be in hell and a few will be in heaven. So, sabi ni John MacArthur, the separation is inevitable and it is ultimate. So, you can't avoid the separation of the good and the righteous or the sorting out. Or we can say we cannot avoid judgment. And that separation and that judgment will be final and ultimate. So, there will be no more chances. Para may ira natin, if we, if we, pag, ang yung malaking net, no. Pag familiar kayo, even lang sa aquarium, pag may maliit kayong net, tapos maraming isda, gusto mong uhulihin. Pag yung mga isda, pag na-touch na ng net, ay tatakbo lang. No? Kaya ang ginagawa natin, if you want to catch the fish, is kino-corner natin sila. So, we corner them and then eventually papasok sa net. So, ganun lang din ang nangyayari ngayon. As we interact with people and as we share the gospel, it's like them touching the net. That they can just avoid and they can just say no and avoid and go on with their lives. But hindi yan forever. A time will come and we will all be standing before Jesus Christ and we will be judged. At wala na silang chance when the net comes and touches them, when the judgment comes, they don't have room anymore to run or avoid it. Kasi nasa corner na sila. So, and that is why uh, in explaining Jesus Dito that there will be a judgment, there will be a separation between the good and the evil. There will be a separation between uh, the children of God and the children of wrath. And, 
and good will be with the Lord forever, and the righteous and the evil will be in hell forever. Some verses na mahihita natin regarding hell and uh, regarding itong uh, separation or judgment. Sa Matthew 25 verses 31 to 32, verses 34 and verse 41, under siya sa subtitle na the final judgment. So verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. So this will be the second coming. Jesus came first. Last, the first coming in Jesus Christ, he was a baby, helpless, born in a manger. The next time he'll come, he will be with, he will come in glory with all his angels with him. And then he will sit on his glorious throne and before him will be gathered all the nations, in these some, but all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. So the, the righteous and the evil. So we have to bear in mind to that ng teaching ni Jesus sa mga apostles that he was uh, ilang beses niyang pabalik-balik na sinabi that there will be a separation, there will be a judgment, there will be a sorting out in the, in the, in, uh, the last day. So verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So for those who are righteous, or righteous, when we say righteous, those who are believers of Christ, uh, those who are imputed with Christ's righteousness, uh, those who are born again Christians, those who gave their lives to Christ, will inherit the kingdom prepared for, for them for us even before uh, in, on the from the foundation of the world now so verse 41 naman talks about the unrighteous or the evil or the wicked ones then he will say to those on his left some are wicked some are good depart from me you cursed or cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels and maybe sabihin yan supposedly ang hell is for the devil and his angels However, may mga rejectors ni Christ, so di Jesus, so dun din papunta. And the fire is not temporary, it's not gonna be 10, 1,000 years, gonna be, not gonna be 10,000 years or 1 million years, it's gonna be eternal. Gonna be billions and billions, hindi ko na alam po kasunod ng mga a trillion, gazillion, and ano pa. No? Forever, it's gonna be eternal. So there will be a final separation between the righteous and the evil, the righteous will be with the Lord, inherit the kingdom, and the evil ones or the wicked ones will go into the eternal fire. So John 5, 27 to 29, it says, and he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life. So there will be a resurrected body, a resurre resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. They will also have a resurrected body, but different body and body natin uh, will be suited and designed to experience joy, ever increasing joy in heaven. Ang sa kanila naman, will be a body suited or designed designed to feel every inch of pain in hell. So it's a verse 50. So three more verses. Mabilis tayo ngayon because it's very straightforward na, na parables. Easy to understand. Nilagyan ko na nga lang ng mga verses uh, para mas may expound. No? So verse 50. And throw them into the fiery furnace. Ito po yung thrust dito. No? Throw them into the... Sino yung them? Ito yung mga... Yung mga good ones ay dalagay sa container. At yung mga bad ones ay itapon. Sa fiery furnace. In that place, there will be... Which place? This place. The fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we know this. Pag sinabing weeping and gnashing of teeth... Ang dinutukoy dito is hell. 
there will be weeping, not just uh, crying na yung, yung mga tears mo ay, will be just rolling down the cheek, but it's weeping, it's wailing, it's eerie kind of uh, weep and gnashing of teeth dahil sa pain, sa torture in hell. Imagine the fire is eternal, the fire is not quenched at ever increasing. How do I know na ever increasing? Yung lighter nga lang, nilagay mo yung kamay mo dito, tapos yung light, may distansya pa yan. But pag after a few seconds, kaya, uh, ilang segundo, kaya mo pa. But let it stay and let it go on. Iinit ang iinit yan. So imagine, lighter nga lang yan. What about the lake of fire? So in hell, ito po yung mga verses na may kita natin that talks about hell. Matthew 5, 29 to 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body to go into hell. In emphasize to Jesus dito, na mas okay pa yung isa lang yung mata mo o isa lang yung kamay mo na nandun ka sa langit kaysa buo yung katawan mo that you will be thrown in hell. In emphasize ni Jesus dito ang horror at ang terror ng hell. Hell is not a pleasant place. There's no fun in hell. It's a place of torment. In emphasize ni Jesus dito. Rather, lose, parang sinabi lang, rather suffer here on earth mga physical mga problems mo rather than uh, completo ka, you enjoy life and so on, but you don't have Christ in your life and you'll end up in hell. So it's better to suffer your whole life on earth than uh, and end up in heaven. In Matthew uh, chapter 23, Mahira din natin doon, talks about hell, chapter 24, chapter 25, and Mark chapter 9, Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 12, and alam po natin Luke chapter 16, yung uh, the rich man and Lazarus. So Jesus talk about hell again and again and again and again. At kausap niya yung crowd, at kausap niya yung disciples. Why? Because he wanted to emphasize na there's a judgment to come, and there are only two places after the judgment. It's going to be heaven or hell and nothing else. Pabalik-balik na tinuro ni Jesus Christ. Yan. What else? Ito yung sabi ni John MacArthur. Uh, just to express the horrors of hell or kung gaano ka uh, kakakatakot or painful and you cannot even compass kung, kung may isang author and writer na nags, nagsabi na even though napagsamasamahin natin yung pain, ng unang pain na, exper na experience ni Adam from the creation of the world until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, pagsamasamahin daw yung mga pain na yun, physical pain, emotional pain, and all, pagsamasamahin daw, it will not even equate sa pain na ma-experience na isang tao sa head. Sabi ni John MacArthur, actually he was only quoting this from another writer, sabi dun, now there is no way to describe hell. Nothing on earth can compare with it no living person has any real idea of it. No madman in wildest flights of insanity ever beheld its horror. No man in delirium ever pictured a place so utterly terrible as this. No nightmare racing across a fever uh, mind ever produces a terror to match that of the mist hell. No murder seen with splashed blood and oozing wound ever suggested a revulsion that could touch the borderlands of hell. Let the most gifted writer exhaust his skill in describing this roaring cavern of unending flame, and he would not even brush in fancy the nearest edge of hell. So up to now, wala pang nakapag actually imagine or picture out accurately Kung ano yung hell. Kasi makikita natin mga verses sa Bible is hindi siya encompassing. 
talks about the fire in hell, talks about uh, kung how long will it go on, talks about kung ano yung nandun, talks about sa Luke 16, may kita natin kung ano yung responses ng mga tao. In hell, no? may kita natin yung sa Luke 16, the rich man, ano yung mga na-feel niya while he was in hell. That was not even the, the lake of fire. Hades pa lang yun. And alam natin, mabasa natin sa Revelation that even Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire. So, there are few points that kailangan natin matutunan about hell before natin makonclude itong parable. Hell, it is a place of unrelieved torment for both body and soul. For both, uh, torment for both body and soul. Doble. So John 5, 29, and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life. So when we say the resurrection, there's a physical body, hindi lang yung soul, hindi lang yung spirit, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of the judgment. Bakit important, important ito? Because, like, for example, a Christian dies now. A Christian dies now, immediately ang spirit niya will be with the Lord. At wala pa siyang resurrected body, wala pa siyang glorified body. Yan ang sabi ng Biblia. Later on pa yung glorification. So, sa second coming pa yun ng Panginoon. That, yan ang sa Christian. What about yung unbeliever? When an unbeliever dies now, kahit gano'n pa siya kabait, but he does not have Jesus in his life, where would he go? Hades, according sa mga theologians, but okay, whether in Hades or where, but pagbasihan natin yung, uh, pagbasihan na lang natin yung Luke 16, sa Hades nga, immediately yung soul niya will be tormented. Kahit wala pa siyang physical na, wala pa siyang resurrected body, yung soul niya will be tormented there. And intact yung senses niya. And so, at this point, ang soul ang tinatorture kasi wala pang body. But later on, pag, pag may resurrected body na, then both soul and body will be tormented in hell. At walang, walang relief, walang recess, walang break, walang lunch break, walang day off, nothing. Unrelieved torment. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Sino yan? Si Jesus Christ. No? Di lang yung body, but body and soul. So both body and soul will be tormented in hell. Hindi yung parang Casper. Kailan niyo po si Casper? No? The friendly ghost? No. Hindi yung, okay, sa spirit ka lang doon sa hell. No, but eventually, so in the final judgment, in the final separation, there will you a person will be given a body designed or suited to feel every pain and every regret in hell. Revelation 21, 8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the Lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So that's hell. Fire and sulfur. Yung mga volcano, uh, pag nakapunta kayo, or somehow, uh, kasi sa amin sa late, may volcano doon na maliit. No? Yung, yung, ang, and somehow may isang stream na, I don't know, it's from the volcano or just yung volcano that just so happened na nasa gitna ng isang uh, part, yung, yung foot ng volcano ay may stream puno ng sulfur, yung tubig mainit, kaya ang tawag dun sa lugar na yun is mainit mainit siya, tapos ang amoy dun yung, yung steam, sulfur kaya yung mga, yung mga, mga skin disease, dun pumupunta sulfur so, volcano pa lang yan. What about the lake of fire? It's the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. 
Number two, it is a place of unrelieved torment for both body and soul. Paulit ulit ng body and soul, no? In varying degrees. Pasensya nyo lang yan, tanggalin ko mamaya before ko i-upload. The doble. So it is a place of unrelieved torment for both body and soul in varying degrees. So my my degree yung torment in hell. So Hebrews 10:29 says, "How much worse punishment do you think would be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace?" So ibig sabihin, mas worse yung punishment ng isang tao na kila alam na kung sino si Jesus Christ and yet continued and persistently rejected the gospel. Kaysa isang tao na hindi alam, kung ang, ang, but no one, everyone has no excuse, sabi pa sa Romans 1, di ba? But iba-iba yung degree ng punishment kasi iba-iba yung knowledge, iba-iba din yung level ng rejection ng tao. Let's say, kung na, lumaki ka sa church, you heard a thousand sermons Tapos may sermon pa sa bahay ng parents mo about Jesus and all. And yet, you, a person continues to reject Christ. Yung punishment niya in hell, hindi pareho sa isang tao lang na one time na nakarinig ng gospel at did not even understand it. And then they both died. And they both went to hell. But iba-iba yung degree ng punishment. No? Matthew 11, 22-24 Pero walang maganda sa hell. Iba-iba yung punishment. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for, so bearable daw for judgment. Actually, well, hindi bearable ang hell, but what Jesus is trying to emphasize here, na may varying degrees nga yung punishment in hell. For Tyre and Sidon than for you, and you Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. So what the verses were emphasizing, na iba-iba ang degree sa punishment in hell. But at the end of the day, kahit ikaw pa yung bisang, kahit isa sa member natin ng family will have the least punishment in hell, it's still gonna be forever, it's gonna still be uh, horrible, it's still gonna be unimaginable pain. Next, it is a place of unrelieved torment for both body and soul in varying degrees, endlessly. So ayan, lean na naman, endlessly. <laughs> And Matthew 25, 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Eternal. Never ends. Ang punishment in hell. So, for us, kumpleto uh, na yung Bible. Eh. And then, uh, ito yung mga verses that I'm trying to share to you, and I'm sure marami pang verses yan talks about hell. And it should somehow do something in our lives, in our heart. It should scare us. It should scare us knowing that marami tayong family members who are going there. Because they don't have Jesus in their lives. And even if they claim to have Jesus in their lives, there's nothing, no deeds that will back it up. So for us, Alam ko, marami po tayong mga families. And knowing this, that there will be a final separation and walang ibang lugar. It's only hell and heaven. Would you want your brothers, your sisters, or auntie, uncle, father, mother to go to hell? Just because you were too scared to share the gospel to them? So Revelation 20.10 and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Like I said, walang break time. 
tormented, they will be tormented, the, the torment, the punishment continues day and night forever and ever. Mark 9, 47, 48. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. So while the torment is going on, fire is not quenched. The lake of fire is not quenched. And the heat is ever increasing. And there will be gnashing of teeth. There will be wailing. And there will be darkness. Hindi ko lang na post na nagpulagay dito yung text about darkness. There will be total pitch black darkness in hell. I don't know how to put them together with darkness and fire. And there will be uh, shame and hatred in hell sa isang tao. And uh, I don't know kung paano nangyari yan. Ang shame at saka yung hatred all together. And... Uh, Fear also. So, napakahirap. And imagine with all that, my worm pa na kumakain. And the worm there do not die. Why? Because hindi na ubus yung body. While your body is feeling every inch of pain, at somehow na kukonsume siguro partly, and then the religion, I don't know how it will be. But the worm will not die because there will be continuous supply of meat, continuous supply of flesh. Nakinakain ng worm. Imagine all the pain, the heat, the thirst, the, uh, the, 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 the hatred, and the shame in hell. Plus, my, my worm pa kumakain sa'yo. And it's not really a good place to go. Hindi walang, hindi cute sa hell. So imagine that. Think of our family members. Uh, so let's be creative. You know, find ways na you share the gospel to them. Matthew 13, 51. So the last, uh, second to the last verse. Matthew 13, uh, 13 50, verse 51. So Nung sinabi na ni Jesus yung parable, pagkatapos na sinabi niya yung parable, so it's about the separation, it's about the judgment, it's about hell. Then he asked, tapos na yung parable, then he asked the disciples, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. Ang understood dito, it means to put together, that is to put together mentally to comprehend. So para sinabi ni Jesus kay na gets mo ba talaga, no? Do you really understand? Do you really uh, get it? Kung gaano na ito yung na mangyayari in the end, there will be a final judgment, no? Like the net. And this net captures everyone wala exempted. And after that, there will be a sorting out or there will be a separation between good and evil. Do you understand that? And after, yun ang sabi ni, ang main is na tanong ni Jesus. Na, do you understand that some of your friends will go to hell? Do you understand that not all of your members, of the, the members of your family will go to heaven? At sabi ng mga disciples, yes. So, Jesus took their word. Na they understood it. Now, let's proceed to the last verse. Matthew 13, verse 52. And he said, when, pag, nung sinabi na nilang yes, and Jesus said, and he said to them, therefore, since I tindi hanyo, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. Ano po yung scribe? We've been talking about scribe for a while now. Ano po yung mga scribe? So ito po yung Greek word ng scribe, grammatiusi, grammatius. No, Gamatius, ang writer, ang scribe. But they're not only writers, sila yung nagkokopya ng mga text, di ba? Tapos, you know, duplicate nila yung mga text. No? But they're not only writers. Ang mga scribe, din, that's a word that we translate, scribe, but it means a learner, a teacher, an interpreter of the law. 
So nag-interpret ng law ang mga scribes, hindi lang nagkokopya. The Old Testament na tinutukoy ditong law. Every trained teacher is instructed and that's from the verb matthew or is meaning disciple concerning the kingdom of heaven. So when we say scribe, hindi lang sila taga-kopya, they're scholars, they're disciples, they're trained no? regarding the kingdom of heaven. So sabi ni Jesus, since naintindihan nyo, para kayong scribe. Yung mga Jewish rulers, meron silang, yung mga religious leaders, meron silang scribe na they train, na they disciple according to what is written sa law, sa Old Testament. Then kayo, you're like the scribes. However, hindi lang old, may new din kayo. No? So a scribe was a student, an interpreter, a transmitter of scripture. He was known as theologian, a lawyer, and a teacher and preacher. They were members of the Sanhedrin. They were acknowledged authorities of the Old Testament and tradition. They were called rabbi. They were influential among scribes known. Now, ang sinabi ni Jesus dito, na kayo din. Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master. Actually, he was talking to them. He was pertaining to them. Na kayo din. Master of the house din kayo who brings out of his treasure what is new and old. Yung mga scribe ng mga Jew, ang alam nila yung old lang. However, kayo, alam nyo din yung new because inexplain nga ni Jesus ano yung new, what will happen in the end. No? So, ang verse na brings out dito is ekbalu. Ekbalu. It means to eject or literally or figuratively to bring forth or to cast like the net. So, ang sinasabi ni Jesus dito, since naintindihan nyo yung parable ng net, that there will be a judgment and there will be a final separation, now you're equipped, you're discipled, alam nyo na, then what you're gonna do? You have to bring out, you have to cast. So, hindi lang you bring out pag may naghahanap. So, you are intentionally casting out the net no, of his treasure what is new and what is old. So the disciples were not to reject the old for the sake of the new. Ang sinabi na nilang dito na yung mga scribe old, yung mga Jewish scribes, alam nila yung Old Testament, alam nila yung law. But now kayo, alam nyo yung old and new. So what does it mean? You have to be smart, you have to be wise. Na you are not to reject the old for the sake of the new, rather the new insights they brought together from Jesus were to be understood in light of the old truths and vice versa. Kaya may higita natin, yung Biblia, ang isang buong story, no? hindi yung separate yung Old Testament, separate yung New Testament. May higita natin, yung mga, yung mga prophecies sa Old Testament ay nangyayari dito sa New Testament, prophecies about Jesus Christ. At yung mga Old Testament verses na mahirap, you can interpret them no? in light of the verses. Sa, sa, may interpret mo itong Old Testament verse using the New Testament verses. They support each other because it's one, because there's only one author. And that is the Holy Spirit. And ang itong new naman ng mga verses ay may mas intindihan mo in light of the Old Testament such as Yung love your, love your God above all and love your neighbor as yourself. Mas maintindihan mo yan lalo when you understand that there were 613 laws in the Old Testament and summarized into 10 and 10 summarized into 2. So naintindihan niyo po. So ito yung sinabi ni Jesus. You're equipped now. Alam niyo na ang old and new. So cast your nets. So conclusion. And this is also for us, for all of us. Alam niyo na, alam na natin lahat, there will be a final judgment and there will be a final ultimate separation at walang exempted kasama lahat ng families natin. So what should we do? We cast out the net. We preach the gospel. Conclusion. Busog ka na agad. Second Corinthians. Oh, may busog na. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 5.11a. It says, Therefore, Knowing the fear or the terror of the Lord, knowing about the judgment and hell, what do we do? We persuade others. We convince others. We share the gospel to them and let them understand about this. 
2 Corinthians 5, 20 to 21. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you or we beg you on behalf of Christ. Why do we need to beg? Because we know the horrors of hell. Hindi madali ang hell. Beg your family members, beg your brother, beg your sister. And I know, sasabihin nila, no, pareho lang naman, I'm, I have Jesus in my heart. But wala naman nakikita sa buhay nila, there's no transformation. If you look at 2 Corinthians 5.17, then the old has gone, the new has come. New heart, new set of desires. No. So we implore you, we beg you on behalf of Jesus Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's Paul's conclusion. Now, what's our conclusion? It's the same. Therefore, knowing that there will be a judgment to come and no one escapes it, and that the separation between the righteous and the evil is in inevitable, tama ba pronunciation ko? Inevitable, and it is ultimate. It means unavoidable, and it is ultimate. Let us act like we should. What is that? Let us be fishers of men because we were called to be fishers of men. We cast our nets, huge nets. No? So go, preach the gospel, and make disciples. So let us learn together. And see you next time. And God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your reminder, O oh Lord, that we should not be complacent, O oh Lord, of what we have known in light of of the judgment to come and the reality of hell. Father in heaven, we ask, oh God, that you supply us the word, you supply us the, and you open the opportunities for us, oh Lord, to share the gospel for those you have prepared to be in your kingdom, even from the foundation of the world. We pray, oh Lord, uh, that there will be many family members of ours who will be with you throughout eternity, O God. And we understand also, O Lord, that there will be no so no one will believe if no one preaches to them. So we pray, O Lord, that you would give us the courage and the boldness and the wisdom that you may supply us with the words to speak, O Lord, to implore them, to beg them to be reconciled to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.